All right, here we go. Uh, Pete McCall again. Um, this is Exercise Science 281, uh, Fall 2016, um, Part 3, Systems that Support Exercise, uh, the Endocrine System. Now, um, a couple weeks ago, we went through um, the different uh, hormones related to strength training. So this is just a review. Uh, big hint, if I'm reviewing it, it means it's pretty important. Um, so for the quiz, be prepared to see some of the questions directly about the hormones. Honestly, um, if we really want to understand how the body adapts to exercise, we really need to understand uh, the hormones that are affected by exercise, whether it's testosterone, whether it's growth hormone, growth factor, um, you know, cortisol, epinephrine. Epinephrine is more of a neurotransmitter. But we need to understand that anytime we exercise or we place stress on the body, we're influencing the levels of hormones in our body. Um, that gives us the general adaptation syndrome. Um, the main reason why I'm doing this is I really want you to understand the general adaptation syndrome, that when a stimulus is applied to the body, there's a two to three week component of a uh, shock or alarm phase of when your body's like, oh my goodness, I'm doing something new. It's having to react to that. There's about a four to 12 week, um, what we call adaptation phase. That's when the body becomes more effective at accommodating or responding to that stress. Um, then finally, there is a two to three week uh, or a period of after, sorry, finally after about 12 weeks or so, and, and this changes. Different people have different response times, but after a period of time, you hit an exhaustion phase where you reach a plateau. So when you look at what hormones do, well, hormones regulate cellular activity. They either stimulate, meaning they, they cause certain reactions, or they inhibit, meaning they block certain reactions. Um, hormones are really uh, closely related to energy production, how your body produces energy to fuel muscle action. Hormones are also used to repair and rebuild muscle cells. That's a big component in, um, you know, there's another sub theme in the class, is we can use exercise to slow down the aging process. We can do that by choosing exercises which promote more anabolic hormones. Anabolic means we're growing tissue. If we're repairing and rebuilding new muscle cells, we are actually helping um, our muscles to act and behave younger, to, to to function younger. So that's one of the ways that we can slow down the aging process via exercise. So I really want you to understand what the general adaptation syndrome is. Um, and you will probably see uh, one or two test questions on it in the coming weeks. But understand there's a two to three week um, alarm phase. Um, there's a four to 12 week adaptation phase. Then after a period of time, 12, 16 weeks, when the, that's when the body adapts to it and it's time to do something different. So that's why it's any type of exercise works. I don't care if your favorite exercise, Pilates, bar, yoga, kettlebell, running, swimming, biking, whatever the type of exercise that, that you enjoy doing the most, your clients enjoy doing the most, every three or four months, you're gonna have to change it up. You go from biking 100 miles to biking 10 miles very fast. You go from running uh, 15 miles to try to run two or three miles very fast. Or you go from doing sprints all the time to doing endurance training. So just your body always needs to have a new stimulus applied to it. This goes through the different phases. Um, again, just an overview or review. The endocrine system, um, hormones are responsible for um, regulating what happens to your cells. Your cells are where changes take place. The term mechanotransduction means mechanical forces create cell changes within the cells. So um, anytime you do an exercise, you are changing the structure and the function of the cells. That happens vis-a-vis -vis the uh, endocrine system. So um, I know not everybody walks into the gym on a Monday going, all right, today I'm changing my cells, but in effect, that's what you do. Anytime you exercise, you're changing your, your cells. Hormone uh, response, there, um, you know, we see a couple different types of hormone, growth hormone, um, and epinephrine, norepinephrine. You have short-term response, meaning what happens immediately during and after exercise. Then you have a chronic or long-term response, meaning over a period of time, your body becomes more effective at using the hormones. Um, testosterone and growth hormones, um, testosterone and growth hormone are examples of when, you're, when you first start an exercise program, when, when the body first starts exercising, it's gonna take a while for those hormones to have an effect. The initial changes in your body due to exercise are due to the neural adaptations, activating more motor units, using more motor units more effectively, recruiting more muscle fibers. All those are short-term adaptations controlled by the nervous system. Long-term adaptations are more related to the endocrine system because it takes a while for your body to build up the receptor sites. 
Your body may produce a hormone. You may produce testosterone or growth hormone in response to exercise. But if you don't have the receptor sites that can activate, that can use those hormones within the cell, those hormones are just going to circulate and be um, in the blood and be flushed out or be metabolized out of the body. So in order for the body to really have an, have another response due to hormones, you need we need to increase our levels of uh, receptor cells, and that takes time, you know, for a period of months. So um, that's why you can read certain things about the hormone hypothesis. Um, when you look at untrained individuals, hormones don't play that much of an effect of initial gains. But when you look at people that have been training for a period of, of months, extensive months or years, hormones have a much greater effect on how the tissue responds to exercise because there are many more hormone receptor sites within the cells. Um, so again, you know, our muscle, um, our response to exercise is affected primarily by the types of muscle fibers we have in the body, slow twitch versus fast twitch. You can't really change um, you know, slow twitch type one has more mitochondria. A fast twitch type two, specifically type two B, it doesn't have mitochondria. You you can't change a muscle cell to have more mitochondria. Um, you do have you do have type two A muscle, <clears throat> type two A muscle cells have both type one and type two B characteristics. Those can adapt or change based on how you train, but really your body is you're born with either a genetic. Um, predisposition towards uh, more um, aerobic fibers, type 1 fibers, or predisposition more towards anaerobic or type 2 fibers. Um, if you can identify the type of muscle fibers you have in the body, uh, meaning what exercise, is it easier for you to sprint or is it easier for you to run long distances, then that can give you an idea of how you should be training most effectively. That's one thing I would always ask clients is, um, what does it feel more, feels more natural, sprinting or doing endurance training? Because if sprinting feels more natural to you, you probably have more fast twitch fibers. If endurance training feels more natural, you probably have more slow twitch muscle fibers. And then I would adjust the exercise program accordingly. You, I, I wanted to put these in here because I wanted you to have these different charts. Um, I'm not going to go over these specific. Uh, I'm not going to read the charts to you. Um, hopefully, we've all gotten to this point in our lives by being able to read. So you can see um, if you want to pause and see um, what these hormones do. You can de most definitely do that but I wanted to give these to you in the notes so you have them. So these are all different hormones um, that are affected. Your pituitary gland controls a number of hormones. Uh, your thyroid gland controls hormones, your parathyroid, your adrenals. Um, that's why we generally call, you know, we generally call adrenaline. If you get pumped up, if you get excited about something, that really is um, a, actually a reaction of epinephrine or norepinephrine, which are used to elevate and increase heart rate. They, they, um, you know, they, they increase uh, blood flow, they dilate uh, vessels to allow blood to enter muscles easier. Um, you know, that's just, that's kind of why, you know, you get pumped up when you, you know, get pumped up, you think about adrenaline, you're, you're, you're dumping epinephrine, norepinephrine into your body. Um, just an important note to, to understand what's going on. GH, um, again, we did this lecture in class. I just wanted to have it here for a quick review. Important thing about GH, get sleep. If you want to get, if you want to be anabolic, if you want to grow muscle tissue, if you're training hard, sleep hard. Um, IGF uh, insulin growth factor, also called mechanolite growth factor, it's called insulin because it, it acts like it, it can it can respond to carbohydrate like insulin. That's one of the reasons why a carbohydrate and protein drink after, um, especially hard weightlifting, can be effective um, because uh, insulin growth factor can help um, promote push the protein into muscle cells more effectively. Uh, BDNF, um, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Um, what that does is helps produce new neurons and cells within your brain. It helps uh, promote new growth of new cells in the brain. Exercise makes us smarter, um, especially when you do a lot of multi-directional, multi-planar exercise and you're learning new movement patterns all the time. You have to, your brain's going to become more effective at reacting to that. So exercise, it's another way that exercise can help keep people young. You produce more of the muscle growing hormones, but it can also help improve your cognition. Um, just a little bit of research. Uh, again, we went over this in class. Um, if I'm reviewing it, it means it's important. Hint, hint. Um, testosterone. Uh, there's a reason why women can't get as big as men. They lack uh, testes. Um, women that, that, generally are, um, that generally have excessive uh, muscle gain 
usually either will produce more home, more uh, testosterone naturally. Women can produce it naturally in the ovaries and the adrenal cortex, or um, they supplement testosterone. You know, they, they take additional testosterone to promote uh, muscle growth. Generally, when you see that, women have thicker foreheads and thicker jaws. I'm not judging. I'm just telling you that's that's how the body responds. Um, testosterone is a male sex hormone because it's produced in the genital male genitalia. If women take it, they'll take on more male characteristics. That just is how physiology works. Um, we see here uh, factors of influencing testosterone, um, the body fat, uh, you know, adipose cells, uh, fat cells produce a uh, enzyme called aromatase. Aromatase can convert testosterone to estradiol, which is a female sex hormone. That's why uh, men with large um, bellies often grow breasts because there are um, estradols, uh, they're converting testosterone to estradiol. Um, that's why the reasons why you see stuff like androgel, um, when men get over the age of 35 or 40, they produce less testosterone naturally. So drug companies have come up with this concept of you have low T. You know what? If you want to help, uh, if you want to help clients, if you want to help friends produce more testosterone, grip and rip. Start lifting heavy stuff. The heavy, heavy sets, you know, two, four, six reps, allow some rest. Uh, anytime you train really heavy, you sleep really hard because we produce uh, testosterone during our REM cycles. Um, just a little bit of research, again, putting it in here. Um, if I'm reviewing it, it's important. Um, we see the fast acting hormones, epinephrine is that way. Um, they're called catecholamine, um, epinephrine, norepinephrine. They work quickly to help produce energy for exercise. Insulin and glucagon um, control blood glucose levels. They, they help make um, energy available for use for exercise. Insulin is a very important um, pro, uh, a very important hormone to support exercise because it allows energy to be available for exercise. Same with glucagon. Um, glucagon helps control the amount of glucose in the bloodstream. So insulin and glucagon work together. Cortisol is a slower acting hormone. Um, it, you know, cortisol, you hear a lot of things about it. We produce cortisol in response to stress. Exercise is a stress on the body. When we um, start exercising, cortisol is released, and cortisol can help metabolize uh, fat for fuel. Um, cortisol can also help convert protein into energy. So um, a lot of times if you become overstressed at work and you have a lot of, or people become overstressed at work and their, their cortisol levels are high, they can actually start metabolizing protein for fuel and they'll conserve, they'll conserve fat. And that's why people that are really stressed can have higher levels of body fat. It just, cortisol is, is in the body, but it's not necessarily working effectively. So there we are, a quick review of how hormones respond to exercise. Um, as I've said a few times, if I'm reviewing it, it's important.